place near my house that is incredible to shoot. Uh, it's pretty close by, and given that I live in a pretty urban area in Southern California, um, what's so unique about it is the fact that it looks like you're in the middle of nowhere, yet you're actually surrounded by some pretty urban areas. Like for example, just on one side is Irvine, and then at night you're so close to Disneyland that you could actually hear the fireworks from this location. Um, it's a place called Black Star Canyon, and it, it's definitely a notorious spot. There's tales of it being haunted, and there's, there's a little bit of dark history if you start digging into it. So when I was younger, we used to drive out there and go hiking at night and really freak ourselves out. The geography is, um, it's surrounded by a bunch of rolling hills and then around that, some even uh, larger, more mountainous hills. And so it really does a great job of kind of isolating you in this little area and making you feel like you're in the middle of nowhere. Recently, I've been using it as a place to test out my gear. I learned how to fly a drone there. Um, anytime I get a new drone or new camera, new lens, or learn a new skill, this is the place I go to. And so I've kind of been waiting for this opportunity that something remarkable would happen in the weather, or just to maybe I'd catch it at a really good sunset or something like that. I just, I always had this place in the back of my mind as a place to go to get a bucket shot, for example. Um, and I've, and I've shot it so many times. I've shot it in a lot of conditions, I've actually felt pretty good about the images, but nothing that I could hang on my wall. This past summer has been incredible. We've had, uh, you know, in June, we usually get this June gloom that just socks in the whole area. But recently, we've had uh, a tropical storm come through Southern California. And then early on in the summer, when it was supposed to be all gray and moody, it was a little bit more clear but it was extremely humid. In fact, we had a couple thunderstorms rip through there, but normally it's just a very calm month, you know, rarely do we get rain in June, and it provided this opportunity for me, and I thought I'd share that with you, a little bit about the truth that what goes into capturing a remarkable image and how you can apply this formula elsewhere, because really it's extremely valuable and it's worth noting. I'm a firmer believer in creating your own luck. And so I just kind of wanted to cover a few things here that you can do that should help you prepare for when you get to the point where you want to invest money and travel somewhere to take a photo. If I could just drive home one key element here, and that is the forefront of your mind should be what's my subject and what is distracting you from it. And then it's your job to just eliminate it. And it's really that simple. And so with these three tips, I'm hoping that this will help you build a process, one that you can start today and start practicing right away so that when you decide to invest some money or travel somewhere and get one of those photos, you're gonna put the odds in your favor and, and create your own luck, so to speak. My first tip is to find two or three spots local to you, preferably within 10 or 15 minutes, but you know, sometimes you do get a little bit of advance warning and it's okay to have a few spots, maybe 30 minutes or an hour out from your home, as long as you're confident you could get to it in time. So my second big takeaway going along with our theme of eliminating distractions is your gear can be one of the biggest distraction. You could have one mix up, one setting or something that's just off and it could take you so long to figure it out. And once you get that figured out, your battery might die or whatever the reason, there's a variety of things that can go wrong. And so it's really important that you work all those kinks out ahead of time and really just dial in your routine and your process so that you can make these mistakes now, learn from them, so that those mistakes don't present a distraction when you do go out and shoot a landscape like this. All right, so the third thing I wanted to mention here, and it's really just a combination of the two, is that the need to really adopt these locations and go there regularly. And, and experiment a little bit. Find the best composition. Once you think you've got that, push it a little bit further, try to find another spot. And then what you're gonna do is, you've basically got your process already dialed in so that when you do venture out, it's gonna be a lot easier for you to find your composition, even at a new foreign location, know generally what type of lighting you're looking for. And then you can also prepare by doing some research. And so that's it, it's really simple. 
Um, but it's worth mentioning that you really do create your own luck and unless you have a system or process in place, and it could be the most simple one, as long as you are regularly eliminating distractions, then you know that when you do invest into going to a, an iconic spot and getting that bucket shot, that you're you're not gonna leave frustrated, you're not gonna leave empty handed, or if you do, at least you're confident that you did everything you could to get that shot. And then also as a bonus tip, I'd highly recommend just keeping an open mind. And as I'll show you here, um, this past summer was, was really remarkable. It didn't just come together for me here at Black Star Canyon, but also again, towards the end of the summer, we had Tropical Storm K move through and it presented this incredible opportunity where I literally caught a double rainbow forming right before my eyes at sunset and was able to capture a full single rainbow and then fragments of a second one. And so I'll share that with you right now, but just know that had my batteries not been charged, had I not known my gear and been prepared, and, and in this case, I was literally flying out of my backyard, so it's a location I knew very well, um, but I had worked out those kinks in advance and I could have easily made a mistake and missed this literally like a three minute opportunity. This rainbow was, was there and gone before I knew it. And so, um, so it's really important. If you don't want to miss one of those opportunities that you practice, get familiar with your gear and know your, your rules of composition going into it or otherwise you're just wasting your time and money, which I guess you could argue wouldn't be a complete waste because if you're like me, sometimes you just learn better when you screw it all up. And so if that's the case, then I'd encourage you to get out there, screw up as much as you can so that when it really counts, you're gonna nail that shot every time. If you're new to this channel, my name is Justin Bradley. I'm a full-time freelance photographer. If you'd please just consider subscribing to this channel and with that, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.